Hey pals, how are you? Thanks for tuning in today. We wanted to get together with you and show you a really nice easy peasy project. Who doesn't like easy peasy on a Friday afternoon, right? Something to lead into your weekend and maybe inspire you to do other things. It's kind of a beginner to intermediate type uh, project. We're going to learn how to build a vintage pendant necklace. A lot of the principles in the video, in the class, are similar to things that I've taught before, but they're assembled carefully just for this project. And those of you who are newer to jewelry making will appreciate it because this is something anyone could do. We're going to make a pendant just like what I'm wearing. So come on over here. You can see it close up and I'll teach you how to count off and separate the pieces and make it the neckline really special and hook it up and you'll have a nice necklace in no time. So come on. Okay, so we're back to make a pendant, a special vintage style pendant. So for this project, you're going to need a ruler because you got to measure a little bit. No big deal. You could eyeball it, but you know, never hurts to have a ruler. I've come to learn the value of having a ruler. Um, you're going to need a little bit of chain, eight, 18 inches to be exact. This is called sister chain or infinity chain. Um, we have some at the site. We have bead and link. We have Figaro. Anything you can count off works well for a project like this. Anything that has open loops that you can count off that is, it balances right with your centerpiece. And you'd, so for example, if you had a very delicate centerpiece, then you would not want to use big chunky chain, right? If you had a substantial showstopper statement type piece, pendant then you wouldn't want to use a little ditzy tiny chain so you match your chain to the project this will work out just fine as you can see that's what I used okay so anything you can count off roller chains good too if you can get a small enough uh, size because you can't wait I don't want to say you can't but you shouldn't you shouldn't for this project use a really big roller it would only go with a huge pendant okay so this is a 25 by 18 mount so you can use any 25 by 18 mount that you have this one, however, I believe is MT09288. Anyway, whichever amount that is, it's a, it's a 25 by 18. <laughs> <laughs> it's either this one or this one. I'll tell you what, these days sometimes when I prepare things. But I went with this one. And the reason I went with this one is because this one's a little heavier and I have a chunky stone there. That's why. Plus, to be honest with you, I like this amount better. So, eh. The other one would be, uh, now, you know what, I'm not going to confuse you. I'm the queen of confusion. Let's just not even I'll talk about it. I'll just put it up in the Yeah, way. yeah, she'll fix it for you. Anyway, so you need, you need a 25 by 18. So if you have one already, use it. I'm using brass ox, colored metal this time, plated metal. Um, but you can use whatever you want. Whatever complements your stone and is to your liking, then do it. A lot of people like silver looks these days or, or bright golden looks. Hey, go for it. These are brass stampings, but you could also use the Bisu by 1928 pewter findings. They work great for a project like this. So I'm using the Brass Sock Sister Chain or Infinity Chain. I'm using the 25 by 18. I'm using this little rosette, which is from the site. I'm trying to tr see if I know I did not write down the number, but we have this in just about every color. It comes in handy for so many things. I've used it for the centerpiece on this. And you're going to need a few little jumps. I used four millimeter in this in this um, uh, project. I also used, I think it was a 12 millimeter lobster claw. You could use a little smaller too, a little larger if you want. Um, also, we used some of this. This is wonderful handmade, hand wrapped Milli Fiori chain. Now this is Chinese film Milli Fiori, but let me tell you, it's all lamp work and it's mighty fine. So I don't have a problem with this. This is some special stuff. It was handmade for me. And as you can see, if you can see up close enough, it's all the wraps are hand done. Somebody sat there and put this together. Can you believe that? And they're so well done. So anyway, we have a little of this on the site as of today, September 13, 2019. But I don't know when you get there if there will be any. Right now, it's selling like a shot. So 
I will get some more. <laughs> I will attempt to. Hopefully they still make it for me. Anyway, we use this. So what I did is I cut off an 18 inch piece of this sister chain. Okay, moving that out of the way. So here it is in all its glory. Now you could probably get along with cutting less because at the end of the day, your chain is going to be, I would say roughly 20, 22 inches. Okay. So you might not need quite as much as that, but it will be close. What I'm going to do is I'm going to separate this chain, which I've not done yet, so I could show you how. And I put in, I'm going to insert these little Millie Fiore pieces along the, the neckline of the chain. Okay. So I tried to pick up some of the color of the piece I'm going to use, which this time I'm going to use this one because I didn't have any more of those Millie Fiore cabs like I used in this. This is check. So I have to get some more of those. But anyway, so I think these will bring up the color in this and complement it nicely so we can go ahead and use it. So really all we need to do is first I'm going to put on my jumpy tool. For those of you who do not know how to use a jumpy tool, if you want to scroll back in the videos a little bit, there's a whole video about doing it, using it. It's a little bit self-explanatory. You can watch me doing it here. But um, if you want to know a little bit more, scroll back. We have them on the site, too. We almost are never out, because how dare we? That's one of our tools we sell the most of. It's a little jumpy tool ring. And here's how it goes. It goes in my pliers. These are flat nose, chain nose, whatever you want to call them. And I just take it and open it. And now I'm going to attach the pendant to the rosette centerpiece. And I'm going to attach it at one of the points in the middle so that it balances nice. I can't just, you know, do anything with this. I have to get things in the right place so it works out. So first, I'm going to attach it right there, okay? Oh, I also might want to mention to you that if you're going to make a project like this, it's good for you to go ahead and glue your stones in ahead of time so that they're all set up and, you know, good enough so that you can go ahead and make your necklace. You wouldn't have to. You could put them in at the end, but it's just kind of nice to have them there and look at them, how they're going to look, you know, your pendant while you make the chain. So you can appreciate, you know, oh, is this going to go together? Is this not? Do I need to change something? That kind of thing. All right, so here's how I do it. With this sister chain, what I do is I have to cut the little infinity link off. Now, you, if you find a better way to do this, uh, have at it, you know, there are many ways to do this kind of stuff. This is how I do it. Okay? So, I'm going to cut that off, get that out of the way, because I want to work with the big loop. So, I need to cut, let's see, let's compare it to what I have here. Always, if you have something for a point of reference, and compare it. Okay. It looks so, like an inch. <laughs> yeah, it does look like an inch, but I'm just, you know, you can measure it too. Nothing wrong with measuring it, but I'm going by the loops because I know this is the same chain. So I'm going to do three loops. And I think I have three loops about everywhere until I get to the back of it. So I'm going to do three loops. So there's, ah, come here. There's one, two, three, snip. Three, snip. I try not to drink too much coffee so far. Because you know what happens to me. No, I don't have to run to the bathroom all the time. <laughs> My handshake. <laughs> Maybe that happens to you. I don't have that problem. Okay, so get rid of this sister link here because we don't need it. Now I'm going to another cut another three. I would have loved to have this done ahead of time. But that didn't happen. So you're going to have to watch me. And I'll just have to talk to you while I do it. But maybe it will help you to get the beat with it. If, especially if you're newer to making jewelry. Because you don't have to have a whole ton of experience to be able to make a necklace like this. And what's even better is that you can make so many styles from this basic pattern. See, now this is twisted, so i got to get it out. It's twisted sister chain. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask for that at the store. <laughs> they won't know what you're talking about. They probably won't even know if you ask for twi for Swiss for sister chain because it's kind of a trade term. So you know, 
now that you know it's called sister chain or infinity chain, you got a leg up on everybody else because you know the trade term and most of them out there don't. <laughs> but now you know it. Okay. But anyway, we usually have some if you need some. I believe this is on the site right now. If it's not, um, let us know over at Bisa Boutiques. You can, if you're ever looking for something can't find it, all you have to do is contact Jordan at bisuboutiques.com J-O-R-D-A-N at bisuboutiques.com That's my son and my partner and my pal for all these many years. Fine young man, he loves to help people. So he'll help you find some and if we don't have it, we'll order it. How's that? I think it's listed as an infinity chain. Is it? Because that's probably what you called it, right, Diane? <laughs> I believe that's what it was already listed as. Was it? I okay. It. I can check it when we're done It doesn't here. matter because either is right. Yeah, either is I right. Could add the term sister chain. And and I, you know, I don't know. I can't tell you how it was that they started to call this sister chain. I do not know. Some I think call it brother sister chain. I don't know about that either. Yeah. But infinity comes from this little loop here. Can you see? It's just kind yeah. of like a figure eight. That type of thing is usually an infinity type thing because it has like no end to it, or it does, but it doesn't look like it does. So it don't look like it do. I do. Okay. What's really funny is when you hear Javi talk like that. <laughs> <laughs> it says when you look at him, you say, something's not right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we have got one, two. Now this one here looks like I left an infinity link on the one end of that one. So you don't want to do that. I've got an extra link here. I'll have to go back and fix that. It looks like the chain's hanging pretty good anyway, but you don't want that on there. So there's another three. Unless you want it longer, then you count, you count it off however you want. I'm doing three, so they have to all match up and all be three in this necklace. Or else it won't be right. So I've got three sets. One, two, three. One, two, three. And then I have to have my ending pieces. Okay, so... This is how I did my ending so you can get a good look at it. And then we'll put it together. Together. Put together to we'll put it together together. <laughs> okay, so this ending piece has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight loops. So let's go for it. Let's count off eight loops without the infinity on I the end. I think you put a jump in the middle. Oh! Thank you. I didn't <laughs> see that. Did you see what I did? I put a jump in here. Now, I will tell you why in a minute. First, I'm going to get myself straight. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. The reason I put a jump in there, guys, is because I always like to put um, a little bit of an extender on my pieces. Almost almost never do I not put an extender and so that's where you could hook it the first time or if you would like a little bit more room in it you could hook it there so we need to have one that's five so I'm just cutting my infinity and then one that's five for the other side to one that's five one that's five and then a little th three job again let's just cut the three job first so we have it the three job mm -hmm. That's called the three job, guys. That's not a technical term. So if you say it somewhere in plate company beyond this video, no one's going to know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> that is a bisuism. Okay, so now we need two with five. So I'm about to cut that. Get your affinity move off there. You don't want it. It'll throw you off. The biggest thing when I first started working with pliers a lot and making stuff like this was just counting it off and getting it to hang right. And it depends. Sometimes when you use flat stampings and stuff like that, uh, flat pieces for connectors, sometimes it's a little bit of a headbanger because they don't always want to hang right. And there's a little trick to that too. And, and, you know, people a lot of times have been saying to me, why don't you do a video on that? How can we get our stuff to be foolproof and get it to hang right? You know what? I don't have the correct answer to that entirely. It has a lot to do with the way you hook the piece up together, making sure your loops are all going the same direction, which in this case you don't need to worry about because you've got round pieces there in the middle. But um, 
not always sometimes it's just something you have to fuss and fiddle with until you get it right you have to sometimes add an extra jump or or something but um the truth of it is it can be done it does give you fits here and there though but this one won't this project if you do it this way will not give you fits anything with beaded chain or beaded spacers in the middle you're gonna be pretty much okay so if you're newer to this and you want to avoid the frustration thing I would say um, don't use a lot of flat segments at first until you get feeling very comfortable with making it so now I have this and I have my three on the end thing and I've got this and now I just have to discover where did I put my lobster I think I put him in here yep there he is he's hiding And I have a nice little um, swivel lobster for this. We try to stock them, but they run out pretty quick at our place because everybody likes them. They cost a little tiny bit more, but as you can see, they'll swivel around. So that helps you too as you're putting together a chain so that you know, if you're having some difficulties getting it to go the right way, this can help you out a little bit. All right, let's put this thing together. The first one, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start out with this chain first, okay? I'm not going to start out with the Millie Fiori beads. I'm going to start out with this chain first because um, I do. I think it's it's better to start out with a little bit of chain first instead of beads first. Unless you're doing all beads and in that case that's different. And so you will probably want to start with smaller beads. But that's me. It doesn't have to be that way. It just can be that way. And that's the way I like it to be. So that's how I'm doing this one. So you can experiment with all different kinds of ways if you like. It's no no big deal, you know. I love this jumpy tool. Some people say they just aren't used to them, can't get onto them, don't care about them, and that's fine. If you're used to working with two pair of pliers, then keep doing that. You know, I just, I have used it for so many years that that's what I prefer. But having said that, there are still times when I've got to get two, two pair of pliers out. So then I'll maybe get two chain noses and work with them. Okay, I need one of these. Because I like the stability of the chain nose. The round nose sometimes because it's round it could slip. So when I'm doing this I would rather use chain nose. And I use of course Wolf brand pliers which we try to carry at the site. We've been out for a while because I can't get them but I'm hoping now that it's fall new shipments will be arriving and I will be able to pick them up because I swear by these things and if you want to know why all you have to do is go kind of scroll back in the videos a little bit and you will see this wonderful video that my sister-in-law Donna did when she was still working with us talking about how they work and why they're so great so and they're not real expensive like um, your Tronux and your Lindstrom and stuff like that they're very reasonable and they hold up for a long time. I have, I think, I think I have three or four pair of them. And none of them have I had a problem with. No issues whatsoever, ever. No issues. So, that's all I gotta say about that. And of course, as you're turning your, your um, jump rings, you wanna make sure that you get them to fit up as flush as you can. You don't want to leave spaces. You know, can you see how this is here? There's a hole there. You never want to leave them like that. Your stuff will come apart. You got to get them flush. You got to get them so that you can hardly discern that there's a line there. Let's see if I can show you. I'm going to do it very slowly. I'm pulling it over very slowly. These will kind of click a little bit when they're in place. Yep. See? You can hardly tell. I've seen where people have put their jumps on so well and so tightly that I swore it was soldered links and I had to look twice. So that's that's the goal. So I'm going to go ahead and put my lobster on now because it's going to go on this chain, this side. Okay, so here he goes. And then we'll have that on. We're just going down the finish line now, guys. Pretty soon we're going to have a necklace. It's going to be coming right up. Okay, so set that one aside and I'll hook up the other one. And once again, I'm going to start with a three loop piece of the sister chain. So I'm going to straighten that out first, get the one I want, and I'm going to use this one here, this one here, to go ahead 
and get that ready. Okay, so I got to remember to turn it this way. If I keep working with it like this, I might get it going the wrong way and have beads down here when I want chain. And then I'll say, ah, and I have to go back. It's not impossible to fix, but, you know. Why have frustration when you don't really need to have any, right? And it's always good, too, if you can just go ahead and cut your links before you start. You know, when they make assembly line type jewelry, production jewelry, everything is cut and prepped ahead of time. And there's nothing wrong with that. It saves you time. Especially if you've got your design worked out and maybe you're making a few of them, maybe in different colors or whatever, cut your your links and get them ready ahead of time and have them just sitting there like I did. It would have gone so much faster for us on this video. We'd be done by now if I'd had the sister chain cut already. So you can appreciate what I'm telling you. Okay, come here you. All right. That's good enough. All right, so get another one. We're almost there, guys. We're getting there. Almost there. Then we'll hook up the chain to the pendant, and we'll be able to put it right on, because we already put a lobster on, right? Yeah. yeah that's good. All right. Almost there. Are you ready? Okay, so now... I think I did something wrong. Let me just check. One, one, two, three. Okay, I got one more section yet. So where is it? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what a horrible laugh. I cackle. I even shock myself. I won't even tell you what my dad says. <laughs> when I do that. But he's a pistol. Okay. Maybe it's where I get it. I'm a pistol. <laughs> okay, so now I got one more to hook up. One more one more one more piece of sister chain. Okay, now here's a dealio. Okay. Here I want to put a bigger jump ring, but I don't have one. So I'm going to have to make do with a 4 millimeter. But generally right here, I'd probably put a 6 millimeter, and I'll tell you why. I'm even putting it there, because I didn't do it over there, did I? No. Okay, the reason this is, be, this is going to be your extender. So you have to have room to clear through that when you want to hook your lobster. And this should be okay, but we're going to check it together, okay? We're going to check it. We're going to take the lobster and put it through to make sure. We're almost done. I mean, unbelievably close. It's like literally a minute. Maybe not even. Or maybe longer because I'm goofing this up. <laughs> Javi said, please get done. I want to go home tonight. She has to take and produce the video after. She does a lot of prep work ahead of time, too. And she's here teaching Diane as well today. Okay, so where did I put that thing? He gets so lost in there. I know they get so. Oh, I see it. Do you see it? Right there. Okay, yeah, it's turned. Okay, yeah. I have to. I have to take and see if this is big enough. If, if it'll work. If not, I'm going to need to do another one. But I think. We're, yeah, we're good. Yay! <laughs> I went through. Since it's a petite lobster, it works. Okay, so I got to remember. I got to keep them both going the same way, so I don't hook it up wrong. I have to do something else. Now, this is my little tip to you. This is my big deal thing, okay? I really don't like to see a chain just left like that on the end. I mean, you could do it. There's nothing wrong with it. A lot of the jewelry that you buy is like that. However, to me, it does not look finished. And I take a nod there from all the vintage jewelry that I've handled. There was almost always a sig tag, a bead, something, because that was back in the day when they did things without taking a lot of shortcuts. And so I take my nod from that, and I like to put a little finial bead on the end. So that's what I'm doing, except now it doesn't want to work. After all those jumps I did, this last one has to give me a fit. Okay, that's good, good enough. All right, so... That's going to hang on the end. So what it's going to look like is 
if I don't use my, um, okay, where, here it is. If I don't, if I don't use the whole length of this, I'll hook it up here and I have a nice little doohickey hanging off the back, which is pretty. Or if I use it all, what I'll do is I'll go up to this one and I still have a pretty thing hanging there. So it's all good. All right. So now let's hook it up to the front and we are done. Okay, so I usually like to put the lobster claw on this side. A lot of people say, isn't there um, a side that you're supposed to put on? You know what? I suppose there is. Some have suggested it goes on the other side, but this is the way I've always done it. And You, you know why, how I go by? Huh? I put it on the side you're putting it on because I'm right-handed to work the lobster. But if you're a left-handed person, then you, you want to do it the, the other, other way. Side. Oh, did I mention Diane's here? <laughs> <laughs> Diane is observing today because she's learning how to do videos for when Javi goes on vacation. Because sometimes she likes to take off and go to Chile. Mm -hmm. yeah. Chile. Where she's... Or Florida. The country where she was born. Or sometimes to Florida. That's okay. Nice oh, you know what? I was yakking and I didn't say anything. Okay. So on this rosette, here at this point at the bottom, that's where we want to hang the pendant. But at the top, don't I would not want you to see you hang both pieces of this chain through this one here. You have options. You could do that. But it's best if you do it at the sides. Wouldn't the it loops flip the and sides. flop if you put it in the middle? Yes. Well, I think so. yeah, it might not always, but it's entirely possible. In fact, it's likely it will. And plus, it just doesn't look good. And another reason why I don't like doing the bead right at the very end is sometimes if you have bigger beads you have a chunky necklace then they'll bang together mm -hmm. and it just it doesn't look right it's not good design um don't do it you know but because this is spaced far enough apart if you'd wanted to start with the millie fury chain you could have but here's another tip if you had done that this necklace just got more expensive for you to make because you would now have to use more of the Millie Fiori chain. How about that? You would have had to have more segments of it. Now that is not that close. So now here's where I get my second pliers up. Let's see if I can do this because I don't see as good as I used to. Even with glasses on. Okay, got it. Cat hair on that. wonder <laughs> why. This is a cat house, that's why. Okay, so now it's done. It's done. I have two beautiful necklaces that I made in very little time. And you now have all the explanations of why I did this and why I did that and what's called what and how you can work this out for yourself. Now I'm going to, you know, that really needs to be a six because I can't find it. But it works. Yeah. A six would be much better. You could find it easier. I would not use an eight, though. An eight will just look too big on the chain, and it'll look like it could stick up. Like, for example, I went with the fours, the four millimeter ones that hook this up, because if you use a jump that's a little too big, it will stand up above your links. Mm -hmm. And it looks, I hate to say it, dumb. So you don't want to do that. So, you know, you need to eyeball your, your chain and your pieces and make sure that your jumps are the right size for the job. If it's real big beads, real big chain, then you need six to eight. But for more delicate piece, a four is the way to go. So let's let's line them up together and have a look here before we take off today. So you can really appreciate how cute they are. And these hang just right. Like I said, they're about um, 20 to 22 inches. So if that one came, that's okay. Nothing wrong with it. Just didn't hook it up, I guess. So we'll hook that one up again. Now on this one, I did use a bigger, and it was easier to find too. That's a six millimeter. You get to the place where you can pretty much tell just by eyeballing it, looking at it. Okay. All right. So there they are in all their wonderfulness, ready to wear by someone who will enjoy wearing them very much. These are great pieces to make, to sell. People love them. They're very comfortable wearing them. Most people would say, that's pretty, not that's too big, that's too chunky, that's too funky for me. Most people would go with this. So it's a good style for that, too. So, I got my peanut gallery over here. Do you 
you just have anything to say to these people today about this, the project that you want to say in, in parting? Diane, you have a few words of wisdom for them? I just like how, how it wasn't very time consuming. No. Um, but it looks so pretty and fancy because of the beaded chain. Right. When you have beaded chain, it, it adds so much interest to it without a lot of work. Mm -hmm. If you had to do all that yourself, mm -hmm. that would have taken much longer. And with the three, I'm just going to tell you how long these I counted it off because it was easier for me that way. But if you want to measure, oops, let's do it this way. It's about an inch and a quarter of beads. So you did that three times. So you got roughly four inches of bead chain on this side and that chain. So let's say you need about eight inches of this stuff. Now I would say if you're buying bead chain to do something like this, go ahead and get a foot. You know, well most people won't sell you less than a foot. I know we can't do it, but you're going to need about eight. But when it comes to these different little beaded sections, you might want to go ahead and cut off ten or something for yourself because I like to plan where my beads are going to be, what colors. Like I have this, you know, bright colors for my pendant, so I wanted to make sure that there were red beads on it. This is all the different kinds of, you know, colors on here. So I had to make sure I got the right sections. Okay, so that's what I did. So there's that. There's about 18 inches worth of the sister chain, which is not an expensive chain. Um, you're not going to have a ton of money into this. And it's a nice profit piece because you don't have much labor in it either. You saw how fast it went together. Cut all your pieces ahead of time. It's going to go together lightning quick. Okay. I guess we better get out of here for today. What do you think, girls? Yay. Yay. Okay. Hey, listen. Don't forget. Like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you would, please. We appreciate all kind comments. Anything that you can say that's helpful that you can share with others who are learning the bead is a wonderful thing. If you subscribe, YouTube will notify you when I'm on here. Sometimes I'm on here live. And that's fun. That is like a party. Every Sunday at 4.30 p.m. EST, come to my YouTube channel. I'm on here live for usually an hour to hour and a half. And we discussed many things. Last week, we designed a piece of jewelry together. Was that unique? It was it was great. It reminded me a lot of when I have my workshops. It was that kind of a feeling. So it was really nice. So I hope I'll see you there. So that's it for today. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can make it. And come see me on Sundays at 4.30 p.m. EST.